Welcome back. All right, news of the day video for all you fine people for your Wednesday, April the 3rd. Uh, some injury news on the board, starting off with Nino Niederreiter. Uh, he suffered a skate cut in Monday's game, and uh, it's a pretty deep cut apparently. He's going to be out for a week. He had to have a few stitches. So all the best to Nino and his recovery. A good player, solid player, and they're going to need his, his depth scoring as we get set for the playoffs for the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, Tortorella today having a press conference that I thought was very revealing and, and very much he, he pulls, basically pulls the curtain back and goes, look, this is how I am. This is who I am. And he's unapologetic for calling out players, uh, and, and basically calling out the team for effort and for issues. He says that there are players who are having a hard time, uh, getting their game to that next level as we get closer to the playoffs. And that he has very real conversations with these players about their play, what he likes and what he doesn't. Uh, he said that even when there's arguments between him and a player, it leads to really good conversations. And honestly, I, I didn't have a problem with anything he said. And and while I don't know about the I don't read anything that's posted, like he, he says he doesn't read any of the articles, I'm not sure. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he did or he didn't. And I wouldn't be surprised if he was the type that would read the article and then just go, yeah, I never read it even though he may have read the entire thing. Uh, and, and Tortorella really has helped to get the Philadelphia Flyers into a position where they can make the playoffs. Uh, apparently the players deciding that they need to get back to that mindset of nobody expects us to be here, we're, we're not being taken seriously. They need to get that mindset back uh, in order to, to get their focus and, and get their effort up for games. I, I would say that the way that they were playing hockey when they were successful uh, is tough hockey to play. It's very physical. It's about limiting opportunities for the opposition. It is uh, no room out on the ice kind of hockey. It's tough. And so I totally understand why the Flyers have had their struggles as of late. I, I don't think that they necessarily aren't going to make the playoffs at all. Uh, they still have a chance. Uh, the reality is it's going to be tough for them in the East. Uh, the good news is it looks like they're likely to extend Fedotov. Uh, it looks like that, that relationship between the team and the players working out well enough already that they're looking at an extension with him. Uh, it sounds like it could be two, three year extension for Fedotov, who is a free agent at the end of this year. Uh, he just came over to play with Philadelphia, of course, but that contract is just a one year contract. So an extension uh, makes a lot of sense for the goaltender as well as for the team. We'll see how that progresses. But I thought, I thought it was a really nice press conference. If you have 15 minutes of your day to sit down and listen to Tortorella, do so. Um, I know there's people who don't like him, say that he's a dinosaur and he's yada, yada, yada. I, th I think if you listen to that interview, or that press conference, I should say, I think you'll maybe, it won't maybe change your mind, but it might soften that stance a little bit about what a dinosaur he is. Uh, because I, I think he's doing the best that he can with the team that was not expected to be there, that was not supposed to have the talent to stay in the playoff hunt. The problem is they get above the playoff line, and so now the pressure kind of changes, it kind of shifts. And he's just saying he doesn't want the team to fade now. He doesn't want them to do all this hard work to get to this point and then just watch it just get frittered away in the last few weeks of the season. So I, I can't disagree with Tortorella on any of this, and I, I can't disagree with how the Flyers have handled it, saying that they're completely transparent with all their players. All their players know where they stand at all times. Uh, the Couturier thing, of course, is still out there, but, I mean, if, if there's one player out of 23 or out of 26, however many are on your roster at that given time, uh, if, if there's one player out of the 23 who isn't all that happy with his his place on the team or I mean it's it's better than having a majority of the room saying we really need to change the coach so all the best to the Flyers in their their hunt for the playoffs <clears throat> so on uh Don and Dolly this morning here in Vancouver uh Steve Peters interviewed he's from uh PHNX Sports I believe it is uh, but anyways, uh, reporting on the Coyote situation, saying that the land auction, even though it's it's not going at this point, 80% uh, of land auctions in that area that is run through the government usually only have one bidder. So that bodes well. And he has said that Marello says he's got this money, so if he has that money, you're then, then they're fine. There shouldn't be any problem with getting it built and getting it done. 2027-2028 uh, is the season that they're looking at for the new arena to be put in place. He also acknowledged that if they can't make this work, then moving to Salt Lake City is is quite possible. So there's been that debate about whether or not the Coyotes would, if this arena deal falls through, if they can't can't win the bid, that then there's other ways they can go about it. But 
while that still is possible, uh, it, it, it definitely sounds like for the NHL, either you get this arena done or we're, we're going to go. Um, and of course, restating too that it's it's a big TV market. It's a big market. They'd really rather not lose that market. And also pointing out, and rightfully so, that there are players in the area uh, who have retired and have become uh, coaches for uh, hockey camps, uh, that there's a lot of grassroots hockey that exists now because the Coyotes have been there for as long as they have. And there are a lot of kids in Arizona playing hockey because of the Coyotes. So, there, and it's definitely part of the reason they're still in the area. And I understand the arguments against that, and I understand people may not be all that happy with that explanation, but again, that's part of the reason why the NHL hasn't pulled up stakes as of yet. So, <clears throat> yesterday's news, and, and at some point I'll probably do a video specifically on the Newfoundland Growlers, they are the latest team to leave St. John's. I was really hopeful that this time around St. John's Newfoundland would hold on to a hockey team. Uh, it is not the first time. It is not the second time. It has happened. Uh, and for St. John's, it's too bad because the Growlers were 28, 28, and 10. So their remaining games are just gone. Uh, the standings will be decided by points percentage since not everybody will have played the same number of games at the end of the season. Uh, but it's too bad. The Growlers, 2019 Kelly Cup champions in their first season. It was a great run. They had, uh, I, I do have a couple of Growlers jerseys, and it's it's too bad it didn't last. I even have a St. John's Maple Leafs jersey that they, re, they released a couple years ago uh, as kind of a, a throwback to when they had the St. John's Maple Leafs there. So there's always the chance that somehow under new ownership, the Growlers come back in. But it's got to be tough for the locals. And again, I have a lot of family in St. John's, so I, I do feel bad because there's sort of that, that hometown tie to that sort of kind of sort of, even though I'm on the opposite coast. And I really wanted the Growlers to succeed. I really wanted them to figure out a way to make this work. Trois, Trois Rivieres uh, was bailed out. They will be sticking around, but the Growlers did not get that same bailout that the Trois Rivieres team did where they got a new, basically new ownership in place. So, yeah, hopefully we see a new team in St. John's relatively soon. Uh, and it, I feel bad for the players, too, because, you know, you're, you're a few games from the end of the season. And then it's, all right, you're all free agents and you're not eligible to play in the playoffs uh, if you get picked up by another team. So just tough all around. Really, really tough all around. Uh, the Calgary Flames. So the Flames are out of the hunt for a playoff spot. And at this point in time... You know, the press conferences, I, I don't know what you're going to ask the players or what they're going to say, but they did say after last night's game uh, that it was a poor effort against the Ducks. They're not happy. If you're a Flames fan, you might be looking at going, eh, better draft position. That that has got to be a conversation at this point in the year for a lot of fan bases, but it was not a great effort against the Ducks. Uh, Anaheim is a team that's fast. They have some skill. And if, if, you, don't, uh, if you don't dictate the play, they can win. They can win games. Absolutely. I, I think the Ducks are, are a good candidate for a team that, that could have a tremendous amount of improvement next season with the right moves made in the offseason. So, yeah, the, the Flames players talking about lack of effort and calling out themselves as well as the team. Uh, we'll see whether or not it turns the Flames' effort around in their next game or not, but it has to be tough to get motivated when you're not in the hunt for a playoff spot and you have to go out there and play against another team that's really not in a playoff spot either. The motivating factor sometimes for these guys is jobs. And I think there's more guys in Anaheim right now playing for jobs than there are in Calgary. So at any rate, uh, we'll see how the Flames' next effort goes for them. So Vancouver News, Demko's rehab is progressing. And he can return to the team on Saturday. He's eligible to come off LTIR. But man, this this really this season has been a microcosm of of just Canuck fandom and just how bonkers it can be. So the first half of the season was all the Canucks are the greatest team in the NHL. They're going to win the Stanley Cup. How dare the hockey guy not say they're going to win the Stanley Cup? This team's awesome. This guy clearly hates the team he's cheering for. Um, now it's Pedersen sucks. Pedersen's terrible. They should just trade him. He should go. Uh, Vancouver has a long history. There's a reason I'm wearing my Bo Horvat jersey. Vancouver has a nice, long, long, illustrious history of throwing their own players under the bus when the Canucks don't do well. Um, all of them. You name any player from any era in Vancouver Canucks history, and Canucks fans have complained about a lack of effort. Uh, I remember that with Pavel Bure. I remember with Bure a lot of, yeah, he scores goals, but... Uh, he doesn't really make that effort, and we're not getting that physical effort from him. I, I don't know that he wants to, I don't know, maybe he doesn't even want to be here. But yeah, he got 60 goals, however. 
Uh, Linden. There were times Linden early on in his career. There was all the complaining. The Sedins. There was never any lack of criticism regarding the Sedins or Luongo. Um, I remember at times people saying this BXA kid, I don't know, does he even belong in the roster? I remember that his first couple of years. It is It is just, it's, it's Canuck fans playing the hits. Now that the team's had a rough stretch, now all of a sudden people want to rip out the core player who just signed an eight-year extension and is, that's it. Just get rid of everybody. I remember last year, Miller. Why are they keeping Miller? They should be keeping Horvat. Then they trade Horvat. I saw Horvat's a bum anyways. He'll never score goals in New York. And he is. He's got 31 goals for the Islanders. So it, it is it is remarkable to me every year. I don't buy into it. I'm never going to buy into it. I, I just, once Patterson signed, he was signed. I don't think Lindholm's sticking around in Vancouver. He's purely a rental. And again, all of the, well, they should have kept Kuzmenko. Why? So he can sit in the press box. He doesn't play the style of hockey that Talkett likes. He's not, he, he wasn't going to. They tried. They would sit him. They would tell him, here's what we want. And they wouldn't get it. So I'm, I'm not saying Kuzmenko isn't a good goal scorer, because he is. I'm just saying that he doesn't fit the kind of hockey that Rick Tockett wants to play. And so he got moved. And I, I, I don't think that's necessarily the end of the world. But again, people want to look for, here's where everything fell apart. Or the team just had a really, really good first half. And now in the second half, they're kind of falling back to earth. We have no idea what's going to happen in the playoffs. If the playoffs started today, they play Nashville. Nashville's lost their last three games. They haven't looked good in any of them. So... At any rate, it is just very interesting to me being a Canuck fan, and and it just feels like it's gone on forever. This We rip apart all of our own players, and then when a player wants to get traded, they're like, I don't know why he wouldn't want to play in this market. Yeah, no idea. And <laughs> I, I have some ideas. But at any rate, uh, yeah, I just wanted to mention that here because I'm not doing a video on Patterson's struggles and all this because I, I think it's being overblown, greatly, greatly overblown. So at any rate... Just throwing that out there, and I do have a bunch of Horvat jerseys. I just don't get to wear them because Canuck fans generally don't don't like that name. It's a bad name now. All right, uh, Toronto Maple Leafs could clinch a playoff spot tonight. All they need is a point against Tampa. They don't need to win. They just need to get it to overtime. Good news for them. Both of the games between themselves and Tampa Bay have gone to overtime so far this season. So it's reasonable to think that the third meeting might as well. Uh, Riley returns to the lineup for them tonight. Uh, Edmondson is out, so Riley being, being back in the lineup should help their blue line a little bit. And, uh, yeah, if Toronto clinches themselves a, pl themselves a playoff spot, then we get into the argument of, well, they're never going to win a round, even though they won a round last year against Tampa, but that didn't count because I, I love hockey fans. I just think hockey fans are the greatest. I'm not even kidding. I think it's just great. From one day to the next, I'm always interested to see the comments here, the comments all over the internet, and see who sucks now. Uh, Tomas Hurdle uh, could debut Friday for the Vegas Golden Knights. I'm going to be really interested to see how Hurdle plays. He's been out of the lineup for a while, and he, it's his first time in Vegas, of course, when he plays. There's never any guarantee when you get a star player that he's going to have chemistry with new line mates, new teammates. And very often it takes a while. It can take quite a while for some players. Others, they just they get out on the ice and it works. Jake Gensel in Carolina, that's just been a perfect match. There's no way to know what's going to happen with Hurdle. No way to know what's going to happen with Hurdle. I'll be curious to see what that does to the lines and and how how their, their chemistry is with him in the lineup. So he could return Friday. Um, Coach Cassidy wouldn't confirm or deny Friday, so Friday's quite possible uh, for him to make his debut with Vegas, but it's going to be interesting. Uh, the Vegas Golden Knights, of course, have been fighting and fighting and fighting throughout the second half of the season in order to stay above the line, and now they're cruising up. The standings are now eight points back of first place in the division, so it sounds crazy, but you just never know. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see if Hurdle debuts on Friday, whether that helps the team or whether or not it might hurt the team. And as crazy as that sounds, it can happen. Uh, Marcus Foligno uh, had core muscle surgery, so he will not play the rest of this season. Uh, been a challenging season for Foligno overall. Uh, comparatively speaking with last season, I don't think it was the strongest season for him, and I think injuries played a role in that as well. So hopefully Marcus is good to go in time for training camp. Shouldn't be a problem. Core muscle surgery, normally that's, you know, what, six, eight weeks, that kind of thing. Uh, but obviously the rest of this season is out. And uh, yeah, so for Felino, he's a heart and soul guy for the Minnesota Wild. Uh, hopefully he's healthy in time for training camp and uh, the Wild can have a nice bounce back next year because it doesn't look like they're going to make the playoffs this year. At any rate, there you go. News of the day video for all you fine people on the internet. 
And for the highly reactionary fans that every night that decides who's going to win the cup and who isn't, never change. Never, ever, ever change. Because I like to go back, like I like to go back like years down the road and look at comment sections underneath playoff games, underneath review videos, where people are just convinced. Team A, is they're out in the first round. They're just dead. And then that team wins the Stanley Cup. Or, oh, clearly, this team's the greatest team that's ever played hockey. And then they're out in the first round. I love that stuff. I think that's great. And uh, continue. Continue on. It's it's fantastic. Uh, but let me know your thoughts, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe in the event you have not done so already. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.